Insiders in the largest technology stocks in the world are selling their stock at the fastest rate that they've done in years. So what do they know that we don't? And why has it been over 100 days since we've last seen a major correction in markets? That and more coming up in today's show, along with the opportunities on the horizon and liquidity from the central banks. Something weird's going on in this chart that we need to talk about. Well, welcome back, everybody, to The Daily Show. My name's Tom, and we need to discuss plenty of topics in the markets right now. We've got some amazing data coming your way. It was a pretty flat session, but let's get started with the big stories. Of course, Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson, one of the biggest bears on the market for some time, has now said the rally will end when the profits dip. Now, this isn't rocket science. Of course, that's pretty much expected. And I think that every single earnings season moving forward is going to be amazing for all of us, whether you're a single stock trader or a sector-based trader, or even an index trader, there's a lot of opportunities on the horizon. Make sure to subscribe for that. But really what he's talking about is the EPS expectations right now for 25 and 26, which we showed in our previous video on the weekend. Make sure to go check that after this one. We're showing that everyone has amazing expectations. If they miss, it's going to be between negative 10 and 20% moves. And I expect some wild action each and every earnings season for at least the next kind of year. Let's now go through why insider selling could be a problem for all of us. NASDAQ insiders selling at a clip not seen since 2019 and 2021. Now, does that sound familiar? If you're thinking, yeah, there were corrections after that, technically there were. Although I don't look into this too much, most famously NVIDIA CEO, obviously selling tons and tons of stock all the time and getting them replenished, I probably think they're buying super yachts and big aircraft. But in general, this is something that is still happening in the markets and should be paid a little bit of attention if it comes with price action. Now, we all know it's been a long time since a correction's happened. Now we're upwards of getting close to 100 days and it's been 67 on average between a 5% correction and around 291 for a 10% correction. Now, the stat that we're talking about today is actually this one, 100 trading days since a 2% pullback from the closing high. Now, this is entering into some weird data. And it's this data that we need to discuss because it actually happens in a lot of secular bull runs and it creates a very weird time where you often get these corrective flash dips that are bought straight back up. Now, in general, that is what's actually happened. There've been flash dips that have been purchased and we'll explain why that may be in just a few moments. But of course, during our weekend video, we also discussed how JP Morgan with some outdated data here have said that momentum crowding is at the 99.8th percentile. Now, if you notice where this is also correlated to, it's that kind of bullish market where we went to an 06 period. We also had the 99 period and the 96 period, some overlays here that are important. Let's now take a look at what tends to happen when we have this 100 days without a 2% pullback. In the worst case scenario, we got about a 10% plus correction. Another one had a 5% plus correction and most of them went sideways to even down over the next kind of 50 to 100 days. Now, ultimately, over a six-month period, however, there was a 100% win rate in all scenarios, with the average being plus 6.8%. So to keep in mind, if we do get a correction, we are most likely going to see a buy-the-dip scenario. Now, what are some of the charts you can be looking at and place on your chart in general? Look to defensives. We talk about this all the time. If the market is turning defensive, we're going to see it in healthcare, consumer staples, utilities, and real estate. Now, I've been talking about utilities having a little bump recently, which they have been having. However, in general, across the board, if the market turns defensive, you know bad things are happening. At the moment, they're making new lows versus the SPY, except for utilities, which is showing the growth trade is still on. So let's now take a look at the stock market data from this week. And Wayne's got a pretty interesting stat here. Now, if you remember rightly, last week was the OPEX and generally that was a negative point, but we didn't see the price action come with it. This week is also slated to be technically negative with only three up and 10 down across the board when we saw positive March periods. Now that's exactly what we've got and there's a decent amount of data here. So I think that you could take it and if we do see the right price action, let's see the market breaking through 51.75, that might bring a 50.90 or 51.100, which we'll look at on the charts very soon. So let's go back to being an investor for a moment. Are we in a secular bull run? The answer is quite simply, yes. Have these lasted a little bit longer? Generally, yes. Are we in the super melt-ups that happen at the end? Not probably sure about that just at this moment. 
And that's because if we actually look at the overlays with a few key periods, you can see where we are right now and what happens moving forward. This is overlaid with 1950 and 1980, and it suggests that there could be a little bit of mishaps at some point this year. And it's inevitable that eventually you will get a better opportunity. The only problem is that sometimes patience is very, very hard to have. Here's an overlay with the 74 and 42 runs. And again, this is around the period where we start to get a little bit nervous about markets. If we think about it from a perspective of those Fed rate cuts, usually what happens is we get a rally into the rate cut itself, then we drop off in a couple of those circumstances, and even some of them tend to drive higher. Central banks around the world have started to cut. In fact, most of them, I think it's 100% of them, are expected to cut. But what I'm going to be looking at, and I think all of us should be, is the overall liquidity. And we always track this, including central bank liquidity, which is a bit more of a complex calculation coming up later in today's show. So overall liquidity has been improving. And you can see versus the Russell, it's a pretty good driver in how the market ends up trading. If liquidity improves, the Russell will probably improve as well. That's a great chart to be watching. Now, the thing about this Bank of America data is that this really is used by a lot of professionals out in the field. So they're going to have some of these targets in mind. This is what we call a cup and handle. In general, the expectations are still quite significant for further bullish action on the markets. And you can see here that the Russell 2000 has also got a nice, what I would call, wipe-off bottom. Some people are going to call this a double bottom. In general, it's a fairly bullish strategy if it breaks through. And we've got our own key levels, which I tend to think are a little bit better than these for where we think the markets might go next if they do break out. But this particular move could be a strong momentum. And it's why we made a video last week talking about the sleeping monster, which is the Russell 2000 and how it could awaken if we break through those zones. Some things have already been breaking though. Russell 1000 value and growth have actually been going up and they've been improving in recent weeks, which is you know just basically more of that mid-cap movement that we've been expecting for a while now. 10-year inflation break-evens. Now, with this week being Good Friday, and of course the data coming out that the Fed often uses, we may see a little bit of a sell coming into maybe the Wednesday or Thursday events, and you'll be wanting to watch that on the price action overall. You can see here that most central banks are getting closer to their targets, but not still making them. And the US 10-year is going to be worthy of watching along with the two-year. We've seen rates up recently and the market's also up. They That is disconnecting from what we had during 22 and 23, where it was rates up and markets would freak out a little bit. That's totally not the way it's been happening. Just a reminder, if you haven't followed us on X, do so. I'm posting every week now the key levels for the US 500. There's a little bit of a snapshot for you and we expect that every week. So if you're interested in that type of thing, follow links in the description and pin comment down below. So has China bottomed? We've talked about this for a while and so far China's been doing pretty well and we're getting more information coming out. These are similar times to what we've had at bottoms or bottoming effects in markets. Generally, you get these types of newspaper articles coming out near the lows. Let's take a look at Bitcoin for a moment. Of course, everyone's getting hyped on the price movement and probably rightfully so. We do tend to see a little bit of a rally into the overall halving market. And if you take a look at the 2016 and 2020 periods, we see a sell-off generally after the halving. And some of those have been brutal in other times and some haven't been. But if we do get the brutal sell, then it usually is a good buy the dip. So again, Bitcoin's starting to improve and breaking through some of our key zones over the last 24 hours. Let's have a look now at volume and big trades. So there was a big trade recently on Hershey's. We talked about it. Cocoa price has shot right back up and the market has come back down to the level. The way it acts around here is going to be important. If there are purchases and it starts to strengthen again, and then Cocoa, of course, falls off a cliff, that's going to be a pretty bullish sign for Hershey's. It's certainly a stock we're watching and we're looking at. Another one is the Russell 2000, a big dark pool transaction coming out of nowhere here. Is it a sell or a buy? We'll soon find out. We've got some big zones coming up, though, that we will be watching and looking at. Let's now look at the S&P 500. First up, we'll look at the intraday movement. So it opened and it closed at pretty much the same level. You'd say it's almost a win for the bears. But realistically, it was just options and the zero DTE is doing their thing. And we'll talk about why it's squeezed. We mentioned on the weekend video, we don't expect huge moves, at least for the Monday and the Tuesday in general. And then the Wednesday could open up 51.75, 51.80. That would be the major key zone that we're looking for. Weekly data suggests that we're moving higher because, of course, at the moment, it's strengthening and been closing at new highs. 
daily suggests that it's a little bit of a win for the Bears. And some people could call this an island reversal, which is a gap up, sitting here, gap down. It's a little bit of a bearish sign, but it still remains above the 20-day moving average. So in general, the bulls are in control. These are the real levels we're looking at based on the futures market action. 52.50, 5,300 being the call resistances. 51.75, 51.80 being where the main buyers are initially. And then underneath that, the 5,100, 50.90 zone. So if the market is able to break through those levels and go below 50.90, I think the bears could be taking control of the market. If we get under 50.50, could we be looking at a 4,700? Absolutely at that stage. That's a really big zone and it will be starting to break through everything that's been holding this market up. For now, it's dull, which means that it's probably not worth shorting. And if you were to short it, you'd want to be using options because it could get easily squeezed to the upside. Now, why could that happen? What's well, got to do with positive gamma environment? So we've talked a lot about core walls in the past and specifically with the OPEX in particular, and they are a real thing. Of course, 5300 has tons of calls sitting on it. And in general, a lot of the riders in the market won't really want to get the market pushed past that level and try to expire as much as they can before that. If it does push through, though, that's when you've got to hedge off that position. So in general, at the moment, we're in a positive gamma environment. There's not much negative gamma and the markets are still driving higher, magneted to these call wall or call resistance zones. Let's now have a look at what that means for zero DTE traders moving forward. You can see that the Tuesday is very like the Monday, super trapped within the zone. And it's between kind of that 52 kind of 25 zone and 52.50 in terms of the trapping. If we break through 52.50, the next magnet is probably going to be 52.75 to 5300. And that's because we can see the next day is sitting more at 52.75. Tons of puts though sitting. It's unlikely the market's going to be able to get through 51.80 anytime soon. But if it does, that's going to start to switch the zero DTE into some negative gamma environments. So that might be starting to push down to that 5100, 5090 zone. For now, we're stuck in a very tight range, and that's what's made, I guess you would say, index trading a little bit boring in the last session. What wasn't boring, though, is rotation. We had energy out in front, one of our favorite sectors that's hit resistance, doing well. Utilities, nice to see it coming through. Gold doing well, and metals up there as well. Five-day rotation is still a mixture of inflation-based trades, being things like home builders, and materials and of course energy and a mixture of the semiconductors doing expertly and really that was thanks to Jerome Powell and the Fed. You can see here the huge jump that happened last week after he reiterated there's a good chance they're going to do a cut. Let's now take a look about central bank liquidity because central bank liquidity at least by some metrics has started to drop. Now we know that this can happen early. This was probably the notable one where I rat ra rabbited on about this for a while being a bit of a drop off took a little period, and then we got that sell during October, which brought us back down. Then central banks inject super hard when things got bad, because remember what happened here was something looked a little bit shaky. They injected super hard, and lo and behold, the markets went up. There were a few drops around the end of the year, which got things shaky. Then they injected straight back up. And since that point, we haven't really seen a drop in central banks, uh, but we did see it just recently. So we've got to now pay attention to all of the lead indicators, including bonds. This is high yield junk. I highly suggest you look at high yield junk. It's been coiling for a while. If it does break down and the markets are breaking up, I wouldn't trust the market movement. Bonds tend to lead. It is important. This is our own indicator for bonds. It might look like high yield junk. It isn't high yield junk. It's something else, but it's showing the same type of coiling. Will we break out? If we do break out, do we instantly fail at this point and then create a UTAD? These are the questions that we will want to ask ourselves. And of course, we'll be watching them very closely. So subscribe to the channel if you're interested. There's another metric here where we basically look at the bonds market options. And what's been upticking a little bit in the last day has been a small amount of uptick. It does precursor a lot of these larger moves for the S&P 500. And at this point, it's still on the downward slope. Now, if that increases heavily, it could be on and price action then on breaks will be way more significant. Remember price action with data, with other surrounding confluence techniques, that's how you get real edge in markets. It's super important to do that. US two-year yield 4.77 and 4.41 remain the main set alerts and everything in between is boring. Call PCE out this Friday. It's going to be an interesting Monday session from that perspective or Tuesday session, uh, but basically 
That is going to be the zone. Dollar index also poised for whether it's a breakout or breakdown. It's at that key res. Really what's happening here is central banks around the world are moving faster to rate cut because they actually have weaker economies than the US right now with the strong economy from the earnings perspective. And that's leading into the dollar being a little bit more attractive. So it's a little bit different to what most people would think, but price action dictates it's very hard to read at this point. US oil, some improvements after this nasty weekly close. And I like what I see on the smaller timeframes. The two hour going to a new high here, dealing a little bit with this, this potential supply at this point, but breaking through this high kind of suggests that maybe 81.20 to 81 could be an interesting zone for day traders. Crude and Brent looking very, very similar. And if we do end up getting a new high, next stop could be $88 a barrel. So that's going to really show that inflation's back and the market, again, might not like that. Energy stocks have been front-loading this and doing it for quite some time. We mentioned them last year. We mentioned them this year. They're actually doing pretty well overall. As a percentage, if you look at the low here from energy stocks, they've actually done 19%, which is not too bad considering that was actually in the middle of January. Other sectors, guys, you've got to look outside of just you know the wild semiconductors every single day. But this is right at the high. And we'll be watching XLE versus SPY. You can see recent outperformance, just like utilities has been outperforming. And if we break to a new high again, I expect it to continue. Let's now move over to gold. So this is GDX. We do think GDX is the better pair than gold spot, although gold spot's been improving on it for years. Uh, from the longer term perspective, you're looking at that cup and handle concept, which is the big base, the handle, therefore a huge multi-year run. I've talked about how I'm bullish on gold, especially when central banks start to cut around the world. The current price action is, eh, I mean, it looks like a flag, but it has that really nasty action with it. Looking for a 2186.85 breakout. If that happens, I think the bulls are a little bit more back in control here, and that flag could be setting us to 2300. 2146 also worth setting an alert. The way it reacts to that is going to be important. Utilities is improving. It may have only done 5 or 6% on the actual sector, but plenty of the top stocks are doing double digits. So again, just other markets offer opportunities. We've been following utilities, and I think it'll be probably another one or two weeks and then probably look to not talk about that for about six months. Uh, Intel, <laughs> let's have a look at Intel here. Uh, news coming out from China of a potential ban or ban in general. Uh, that led to a sell during the market morning, but a really nice pickup. And it's AMD that I want to discuss because this is, of course, a stock I've been talking about last week, and it looks okay. It actually found buyers. It's come again above that most traded zone. It's trading above this VWAP here, which is pretty important, and it's finding something going on. Now, this is one that I am certainly looking at quite closely this is probably the chart we want to be watching here. The 20 on the two hour, that is the 20 moving average. We want to breach through this zone. We want to breach that previous high and that's going to put in a nice base. It's a one, two, three. I do quite like these. I talk a bit about them in my advanced masterclass and how I look towards you know potentially finding that value when everyone else is hating it. Moving over to the other world markets, UK 100, big breakout, first TP zone. Pullback should be met by bull demand, I would think here, especially based on the energy markets. The Aussie 200 for the Australians out there is also very similar. And remember, people around the world, we, there are different markets out there. In fact, the Eurozone has outperformed in many ways a lot of the US companies in recent months. If we think about it, this is what's going on with the Aussie 200. And again, it's struggling at this point, but it still has that overall higher high concept on the smaller time frame. looking for the higher high in the big time frame to push an 8,000, maybe even 8,200 narrative. What about the Hong Kong exchange? Well, we saw before that things are starting to improve and we've also got a series of higher highs and higher lows. Now, this is a good sign. We want a new higher high, 17,001 to set an alert for. And in general, we're looking at tech stocks for the market. That's usually what should drive it out. If we go and have a look at things like the NASDAQ and the US 2K, you can see here the NASDAQ is barely grinding out new highs, incredibly dull, trend still up. That's where we've been seeing a little bit of weakness though. If we are going to sell, it could be that the tech stocks sell harder than the S&P, I would say at this point. And the US 2K is probably the more interesting market from a TA perspective. 2050, 2040 could be where buyers sit. We found that big, nice breach from last week. 
And if we get above the 2110 with the weekly close, it's going to be on. I think that's going to be an awesome momentum trade. We spoke about it as the sleeping dragon. Uh, and if it wakens, it's going to be a big deal. Of course, Bitcoin is what most people will be talking about right now just because it's been a nice return over the last 24 hours. We first talked about the idea that bulls needed to hold this zone. They managed to push it through 70K. That's a good sign for markets. And at the moment, it could be going to a new all-time high. Of course, maybe it's going to be a sell after the halving event. If it does come back down to this level, though, I do not like that level anymore. Um, this was good when it was here. We first reported on it. We spoke about it at great length. If it does get down here again, though, I would think it's going to break through 60 and that's going to lead on to that 30% decline. So for now, Bitcoin bulls are in firm control of the markets. For the news ahead, there's a little bit, and it's mostly the Friday that I want to talk about here, which is, of course, Core PCE and Fed Chair Powell. Now, this is happening on the bank holidays. So that is a bit of a problem because liquidity is going to be lower. And of course, Chair Powell could say something wild, but really the Core PCE is often used. And it's interesting that he's uh, got that scheduled straight after. So what's he going to say? What's going to come out? Is this going to be the big catalyst of the week? Certainly one that we'll all need to be looking at. So thanks so much for watching today's show. If you enjoyed it, remember subscribe, smash that like button. Sorry for it being out so late. Lost quite a few recordings today, but that's all right. We should be on top of it for now. Bye for now.